Hi, Mitch Hauschel, Maximum Training Solutions. Um, just uh, kind of wrapping up this little string I've, I've done here, the last few posts about uh, treating the post-op knee patient, uh, not necessarily intentionally, just kind of the way things have flow, uh, flowed here as I've put some blog posts together. Uh, I want to talk today about um, working on some range of motion post-operatively, uh, especially for that ACL patient, uh, maybe a total knee patient, uh, those patients that really struggle for uh, flexion uh, specifically. Um, I've never been a big fan of towel slides or wall slides. Um, I, I think a lot of patients really guard with it and uh, really struggle to relax to get that range of motion. I um, also just feel like it kind of puts them in an awkward position. So the uh, last couple of years I started playing with some different things, uh, looking at, um, at how we can improve uh, that process of gaining that flexion immediately. Uh, so we're going to start some of this stuff immediately the day after surgery, uh, just because the quicker I get on that range of motion, the better off I am. So um, I like this technique for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, it really allows the patients to relax, which gives us a lot of uh, uh, advantages for gaining that range of motion. So they're not guarded very much. Number two, it really maximizes my time with their treatment because I'm going to be doing a lot of hands-on therapy anyway in the first few sessions. Uh, so it allows me to combine working on the hip flexor, which is always locked down, um, because typically they're on uh, crutches or um, they've got some sort of a, um, an issue with their gait because obviously they're post-op. So uh, I, their hip flexor, that psoas, is always locked down. So I want to go in and spend some time working on it. So now I can combine these two things to really maximize my time and my hands-on time. So um, I do a lot of positional release therapy on the psoas. I uh, just find that it's probably the easiest and the fastest and the best way that I can really get in there and work on it. Uh, understanding that it's a muscle that really originates back on the spine. So there's only so much I can palpate and touch, um, but I'm still going to go after what I can to try to uh, change some of that neurological tone. Um, so I'm going to come in here with my thumb. I'm going to find one of those spots on that psoas. My patient's obviously going to tell me uh, where they're sore. I'm going to find that and then take them into, uh, into hip flexion, just like I would classic positional release therapy. Now, obviously, um, if they're post-op knee patient, I need to support this knee and this leg really well. So I'm going to try to keep them as comfortable as I possibly can. So I'm going to take that knee, that hip into flexion until I find a position where they can really start to relax that so as starts to let go. Um, so typically you're going to hang out here for around 90 seconds. That's kind of the magic number, what the research is telling us right now, um, for, uh, for working on, uh, on a muscle to change some of that neurological tone. So I'm going to hang out here until I really feel that leg go dead. And then I'm just going to start to work on a little bit of, of knee flexion with them. And they're going to tell me when I need to stop basically with their, their facial expressions and a little bit of guarding. Um, but what I find is if I just nice, easy start to take them through this range of motion, I can gain a lot of motion a lot more quickly than I could with some of the other traditional methods uh, that most of us learned in school. And I think that's really just because they're able to relax and let that leg go. And so I'm still going to keep my thumb on that psoas for at least 90 seconds, but then I'm going to start to challenge that range of motion as much as I can and as much as they'll allow me. So then just like we would with any other PRT, I'm gonna let this leg down, I'm gonna find another spot, take them back up into hip flexion. Once again, relax here until this leg goes dead. And if I can get more hip flexion, get them in a more comfortable position, I will. Um, but a lot of times, get into about 90 degrees, I can really feel that so as uh, release. And then as that leg goes dead, I can start to, uh, start to really work on that flexion again. So, uh, and I'm going to work various spots on that psoas. So I'm going to get four, five, six, eight sessions, whatever it is, of working on that flexion. And then we're going to take that into our other strengthening um, or, or uh, repatterning uh, exercises, whatever you, it is that you have planned for them that day. So um, give us a shot. It's a great technique for working on that, uh, that knee flexion post-op. Uh, let me know what you think. For any more information, you can always check out our website, www.maximumtrainingsolutions.com.